Morning everyone, this is Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker and I want to thank you for this opportunity to address the Health Policy Commission's 2020 Cost Trends Hearing. Thanks to David Seltz for that introduction and for the work that you and your team at the Health Policy Commission do every single day, especially the time and resources you've dedicated to the Commonwealth's COVID-19 Response Command Center. Thanks as well to Dr. Stuart Altman and the entire HPC board, including our HHS Secretary Mary Lou Sutters, who as you know has tirelessly led our COVID-19 response effort this year. This year's cost trends hearing obviously looks a lot different due to the ongoing pandemic. But even though we are gathering virtually this year, we're grateful that the HPC remains committed to its mission of improving healthcare by analyzing data and engaging key players. Your mission is more important than ever in 2020. As we all know, this year, the Commonwealth's healthcare system has been tested like never before. But through it all, the strength, determination, and resilience of our healthcare workers has been on full display. From our hospitals to our community health centers to our long-term care facilities, the healthcare workers across the system have stepped up, adapted, and adjusted, and responded to these unprecedented challenges. Our healthcare workers are perhaps the Commonwealth's greatest asset in fighting this virus, and our administration has been proud to support the healthcare community as we continue to confront this challenge together. Over the course of the pandemic, we've invested over $1 billion to stabilize our healthcare and safety net providers. And with our recent filing of a new nursing home support and accountability package, we've committed over $400 million to the Commonwealth nursing homes. We've distributed millions of pieces of PPE to hospitals, first responders, home care workers, and others. And we've launched a testing and tracing infrastructure that leads the nation. We still have a long way to go. Some of the smartest minds in the world are pursuing a vaccine. Many of them happen to be located right here in Massachusetts. But until then, we'll work with the healthcare community to sustain Massachusetts' progress in fighting this virus. As we continue to battle COVID-19, it's important to consider the ways that the pandemic has changed how healthcare is delivered here in the Commonwealth. When I spoke at the cost trends hearing last year, which seems like a million years ago at this point, I outlined a comprehensive healthcare reform bill that we had recently filed with the legislature. We remain committed to enacting these reforms because we believe they'll improve outcomes for patients, drive down costs, and prepare our system for the future. And we believe that this proposal is now more important than ever. In some cases, emergency measures that we've implemented to support our response to the pandemic are highlighting the need to enact many of these reforms on a permanent basis. For example, the adoption of telehealth services during this pandemic has significantly increased access to care. During the height of the pandemic, 75% of mental health clinical visits occurred via telehealth. For some behavioral health pro providers, as many as 90% of all services and treatment were delivered via telehealth during that time. As you all know, the bill we filed seeks to create a framework to permanently integrate telehealth into the healthcare system here in Massachusetts. If the current trend of telehealth utilization continues beyond the pandemic, we can reduce costs for the healthcare system long term by shifting care out of higher cost settings. And telehealth also reduces the potential for infections to spread. And we've also seen far fewer patients fail to show up for appointments using telehealth. Our legislation also aims to address health disparities beyond this pandemic and create additional access to services. To that end, our bill allows advanced practice registered nurses to practice at the top of their license. We've seen the benefits of that expansion of scope of practice for nurse practitioners due to the emergency measures we've put in place during this pandemic. Permanently expanding the scope of practice will ultimately allow for more critical care to be provided to more people. And finally, we continue to believe in the importance of shifting the focus of our healthcare system from acute care to primary and behavioral health care. This pandemic has highlighted the importance of behavioral health care, and for far too long, these practices have not been at the forefront of our healthcare system. That's why the bill we filed last year included a requirement that providers and insurers, including MassHealth, must increase spending on behavioral health and primary care by 30% over the next three years while remaining within the construct of the state's healthcare cost growth benchmark. We continue to have productive conversations with our colleagues in the legislature on our healthcare proposal. 
We look forward to working with them to pass these important reforms. One additional note on how this pandemic has changed healthcare delivery. We recognize that healthcare utilization and spending have dropped over the past six months. Even though elective procedures are allowed again, utilization in many places remains fairly low. Our administration's partnered with hospitals and community health centers to send a clear message. Residents should not delay accessing care due to the pandemic. Our healthcare facilities are safe and they continue to implement rigorous infection control measures. We'll continue to work with the healthcare community to make sure residents know they can safely access care during this pandemic. Now, before I close, I want to note the theme of this year's hearing is assessing impact, advancing equity. Later this morning, you'll hear from expert speakers and panelists on the disproportionate impact this pandemic is having on communities of color. These are important conversations to have and our administration is committed to engaging in this dialogue and responding accordingly. The Department of Public Health recently convened a COVID-19 Health Equity Advisory Group to evaluate the needs of communities and populations disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. Their recommendations continue to guide our response to this pandemic as we seek to support communities that have borne the brunt of the impact. We've improved race and ethnicity data collection for COVID-19 testing so we can understand and address racial disparities. We've launched free testing sites through our Stop the Spread program in communities that have been disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. There are now 18 overall in operation in Massachusetts. And we're continuing to work closely with communities seeing persistently high levels of transmission and responding with multilingual public health awareness efforts. And we're addressing social determinants of health that have been exacerbated by this pandemic, like food insecurity and housing instability. And we're grateful to the HPC for your work to bring these issues to the forefront. On these issues and on so many others, you've been a terrific partner to our administration. And we look forward to continuing to work with you and our other partners across the healthcare system during this public health crisis, and hopefully at some point beyond. Best of luck with your important conversations today, and I wanna thank you for the opportunity to address you.